Hello everybody, this is Tom and uh, we're going to begin looking at uh, Project 1 as a 3D roller coaster scene. Uh, several different reasons why I choose to use the roller coaster as a project. Um, number one is it's such a dynamic device um, as opposed to just a car that goes up and down and follows a road. A roller coaster has a lot of dynamic features, uh, rolls, twists, turns, uh, deceleration, acceleration, whatnot. So being able to, to mock these in a 3D environment with the disregard of gravity uh, is a very important um, uh, feature to understand about 3D space is uh, kind of being that magician behind the curtain making things uh, appear illusions. Uh, the other reason why is it kind of has a lot of structural elements that uh, are very helpful in any 3D model. Um, the track particularly uh, is going to just be, we're going to start off on little shape and that thing is going to just take off uh, as well as having objects follow paths and again the dynamic feature of up, down, left, right, in and out twisting, turning, and whatnot. So if you can design a roller coaster scene, you should be able to really animate any kind of uh, moving object uh, on a given path based off of this lesson. So without further ado, let's go ahead and begin. And I'd like to go ahead and share some pictures of some uh, photographs here of just some roller coaster track. There are many different types of roller coaster track. You may see one in here that you particularly like or you may also decide to make your own and uh, I strongly encourage you to go out on the web and just Google uh, roller coaster track and you'll see hundreds of different styles and techniques um, this particular track is for a coaster company called uh, B&M and uh, they have this uh, kind of patented box that's hollow and it makes a certain noise and uh, it's, their coasters are recognizable by that uh, I do want to point out that every track we're going to work with here is, uh, I guess you'd say tubular track, where there are two rails on both sides, a series of supports or wings, and then an inside support which gets welded to the actual supports. And we're going to try to stay uh, somewhat consistent with that, even if you use a different type of track, most of them will look the same. I want to go ahead and do another one here now. Uh, which is very similar to the last one we looked at but as you can tell this coaster track is upside down and this is what we call an inverted coaster and uh, you can choose to do either one you can do the traditional sitting on top of the track uh, which has a variation of floorless and stand up styles or we also have the track here where it's upside down and you hang from the track and swing uh, either way, the development of the track is going to be the exact same way. You're just going to twist at 180 degrees in the long run. We also have, um, here's another version of that uh, B&M with the square, the wings, and then the braces coming out. And this is an actual 3D roller coaster game called No Limits. And uh, they have a, a self-generated way of making track in there. A more traditional style it's going to be something like this, similar to the corkscrew at Cedar Point, uh, even uh, the Magnum at Cedar Point, where we have the supports on the outside of the track and uh, this tube down the middle holding it together. A very popular track now is that of the uh, Top Throw Dragster Millennium Force, uh, a company called Intamin and uh, what they do is they have, and, and this, this style of track is going to be a little different when we get into the modeling process if you go with this. It's a very complex track so I, I don't want to discourage you from using this style but it does take up a lot of memory in the computer because of the detail here but you have all of these beams going across and all these supports and uh, it's, it's an attractive looking track yet it's a very large model. It's very more difficult to model. So that's just some ideas of some coaster tracks that we're going to be looking at uh, as an example here. And we begin in 3DS Max by trying to visualize if we took a piece of track, what would we have to do if we cut the piece of track? What would it look like in the front view straight on? So we'll begin by doing that. And you can simply reference this piece, um, uh, maybe a picture or whatnot. Uh, but try to visualize as I'm drawing through this, I'll kind of discuss where I'm going with this. But a lot of the steps will not really make sense until 
later on down the road because uh, I don't want to jump too far ahead. To simplify the process, let's all start in the front viewport and let's maximize that viewport. We're going to be working in a 2D surface here for a few moments uh, before we even get to 3D. So again, think 2D for now. And I'm going to go ahead and begin with a circle. So I'm going to go to Create Circle. I'm going to draw a circle in the middle of my screen. Now, I would suggest following along with my lesson here and then going back and choosing the exact track you want after you see how the process occurs and then remodel your track to the way you want. But for now, I'm going to keep it pretty generalized. I'm going to use an older form of tubular steel track. And in order to keep this nice and clean and symmetrical, after I've drawn the circle, I'm going to go ahead with my move tool. I get my transform gizmo comes up here. I'm going to go and turn my X coordinate, my Y coordinate, and my Z coordinate to zero. That way I'm at perfectly in the center of my grid. The next step is to create another circle that's going to represent the side of the track. Now, please do not clone this circle and in a little bit you'll you'll see why begin with a brand new circle and maybe just pick a spot somewhere up here to the right and go ahead and draw another circle smaller uh, typically the track over here is smaller than the support in the middle just like we did over here we're going to take the move tool and regardless of your scale don't worry about the size of what you're working with right now just look down at these numbers, your X, your Y, and your Z. Your Y should be at zero, because we're not going in and out yet on the three dimensions. We're just going up, down, left, and right. If your numbers don't match these, that's okay. But what I'm going to suggest is round the number off. I made 80.11. I'm just going to type in 80. It's an easy number to remember. And then 30 is an easy number to remember. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clone this pipe to the other side. And I do that by holding shift and I can take my mouse and grab the red arrow here and just drag to the left. Now we want it perfectly symmetrical and you could probably sit here and eyeball it and get it pretty close. But I want to make sure you do a copy and not an instance. And now with that object selected we can go down here and notice that this one here is at 80-30 and this one's at negative 69. It should be negative 80. And that's virtually saying that it is exact same distance. It's 80 units from the center origin in both directions, which means it's perfectly symmetrical. Let's go ahead and save. Do a file, save as, and you can call this coaster track or in my case I'll call it coaster track 2 because I already have a coaster track out there. And let's continue. Our next step is going to be to take our line tool and again we're not working with three dimensions yet we're only working with a 2D face but try to visualize what metal support is going to be used to keep these two pieces together. Now we looked at earlier and I'll pull it back up here again this particular track where this support kind of wraps around the outside and then it comes down here and that's what we're going to do. I'm going to try to duplicate that here. In fact, I'll go ahead and pull that off to the side and I'm going to take my line tool and again I'm thinking of symmetrically. I'm only going to dissolve, draw half of this because I'll be able to mirror it here in a moment. So I'm going to go ahead and start roughly at the center. I can keep straight lines by holding the shift key I'll come up to about maybe, in fact, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and take both my track and move them up here a little bit. A little bit of space there to work with now. So here we go again. Let's start here in the center, holding my shift key. I'm going to come up. I just pick about this spot here. Come over. And about this point it kind of curves up a little bit slides up next to the track and it actually kind of curves into the track a little bit. 
Oh, maybe do something like this. This part bends out, this part bends down. And then there's a section that kind of comes back in. So that's approximately just a rough idea of what I'm working with here. And if I wanted to change this at this point, hitting modify will allow me to go in and adjust these pieces. So maybe I'm going to slide them down a little bit and say, you know what, I want this to be here. I want this to come out more like this. Uh, maybe slide this down and this over and this up. That might look a little better. Then again, maybe not. Anyways, you can see the point here that you could take the time to design your own particular coaster track. It doesn't have to be anything that I have here uh, on the screen. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to mirror this over. Now, if we hit mirror right now, it's going to go ahead and spin on its own axis, which is defined by pretty much the, the, the transform gizmo, wherever that may fall. And if I hit Y and X, you'll see that it changes. I also want to hit copy. Now I could go ahead and mirror that, hit copy, okay, and then sit here and try to figure this out. Or a faster way of doing this would be to go into the hierarchy, change, once I hit effect pivot only, change this pivot point to zero, zero, zero. Because we know that's the dead center of our grid. That allows me to take this and mirror it on a perfect circle, pretty much perfectly down the middle of the circle, giving me two pieces that are exactly the same. And I'm going to go ahead and color these all so it makes it a little easier for you to see. Okay. At this point, let's save. Our next step. Let's go ahead out into our perspective view and notice that we're working with a 2D shape, not a 3D object. We're going to use the basic extrude command to give this track some section. I'm going to begin with the circle here at the bottom. So I select the circle. Under modify, I'm going to hit E. You have to hit the circle, hit the, mod the modify list, and then hit E, and hit the word extrude. When we hit extrude, we get a paper thin circle, but as I extrude out, you'll see that I can give this thing some depth. Now, what I'm shooting for is the segments in between these beams. So again, I'll pull up our reference picture here. And notice that each beam there's a section in between. We don't want to we don't want that to be filled solid because it's it, it's kind of pointless to do that. So these supports are you know periodically found through the track. I'm going to go ahead and just uh, uh, I think that's good right there. We'll we'll round it off and we'll do uh, 200. And then I'm going to change my uh, viewport to edged faces. And what you can anticipate here is that because this track is going to bend and twist, without any segments in here, this piece will not bend properly. It actually will just, you know, taper off, which is not what we want. We want it to be able to move and bend with the contour of the track. So it's important when we do an extrusion to throw in some segments. I'll say six. Good number. Don't overdo this. Yes, 30 segments would definitely keep it nice and clean, but think about all the additional faces that this particular part of the model has. It's going to rapidly get larger as we build a whole entire roller coaster this way. So cutting this down to six would probably work. You might even be able to take the original circle down some in the interpolation, down to maybe five steps. And it still looks circular, and that just removed a handful of faces. Going down to four, eh, might start to see some, some edged faces. Next, what we're going to do is go ahead and we're going to pause and uh, return in our next video, where we're going to continue uh, with the extrusion process here.